Despite a hard-fought victory in the halting of the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline, activists at Standing Rock, the reservation, are staying put. Many protesters fear the victory is only temporary and that it's only a matter of time before the company starts building that pipeline again. And they resume construction, nothing changes. That's what they're afraid of. Joining me now to discuss whether this is a legal possibility is co-host and creator of the Young Turks Media Network and attorney, Jank Uger, an all-around very sharp guy. Jank, how are you? Great. Thank you, Pap. I appreciate it. I want to ask you by I want to ask you this. What factors do you think made the Obama administration and the Army Corps of Engineers cave into the demands of these protesters to halt this pipeline? What happened? Well, I think there were three factors. One, and most importantly, was the protesters themselves. Uh, they just would not relent. And whether it was brutally freezing temperatures, assault by the police there, basically as, acting as the Pinkertons of the modern day era, uh, they just would not uh, give in. That's why it's called Standing Rock, and they stood like a rock there. Second of all, uh, the media. We went to go cover it. Now, of course, mainstream media didn't, corporate media was nowhere near it. But, for example, Young Turks sent Jordan Charton, our reporter, there five different times. And uh, videos that we made uh, were spread all across social media, seen tens of millions of times. And then uh, celebrities started to go up there, and we recorded all of that, and that got put in all the papers. And then the third angle was the veterans for Standing Rock. These guys, led by Wes Clark and Michael Wood, organized initially 2,000 and what wound up being 4,000 veterans to go act as, as they put it, human shields for the water protectors. And when the veterans uh, were going to show up, all of a sudden, after all the media attention and, uh, and the protesters who would not yield and the veterans come, the Obama administration decided, hey, you know what? Maybe we should do something about this. I think that it was a combination <laughs> of those factors that woke them up. Yeah. Okay, where do you think this growing and this very powerful movement should go from here, Chank? Well, what happens next? Well, look, there's, there's this particular issue, then there's the issue of um, oil pipelines all across the country, and then the third part of it is civil disobedience, I believe, at large. So first, uh, on the Dakota Access Pipeline, unfortunately this fight is nowhere near over, because we found out today that Rick Perry is going to be named the Secretary of Energy. Rick Perry is on the board of Energy Transfer Partners who owns the Dakota Access Pipeline. The corruption is so brazen. It's, it's, I've never seen anything like this. So Trump, who, who owns shares in the Dakota Access Pipeline, puts a guy who's on the board of the uh, Energy Transfer Partners, and so they're, they're likely to want to continue to profit off of it. Um, but the veterans yeah, said, hey, you know, there was 4,000 of us. Now there's going to be next time 10,000 of us. So it's th this pipeline uh, issue Jay, continues. After the decision to halt the pipeline was made, uh, Public Energy Transfer Partners and Sunoco Logistics responded. I mean, they, they came out and said, th this is the quote, they, they fully expect to complete construction of the pipeline without any additional rerouting. Nothing this administration uh, has done changes that in any way. I mean, have you ever seen such arrogance by a corporation that says, you know, we really don't care what the government says. We really don't care what the president says. We're going to do this anyway. Isn't that the attitude that this rogue company has had from the very beginning of this project? Well, that's exactly right. And I, I'm asking the officials and the police in North Dakota to turn around. What I mean by that is uh, the Army Corps of Engineers has very clearly stated that they do not have permission to drill and that they're going to do an environmental impact statement which could take months and sometimes even years to conclude. So if the company is saying, as they are now, that we are 100% going to drill, then the police shouldn't be facing the protesters. They should be facing towards the company. Jack, what I find incredible is that this company has this attitude that they're bulletproof, that nothing can happen to them, they can do what they want to do. Had it not been for what you did with social media and what other people did in social media, corporate media would not even shown up for this. Did I get that right or am I overstating it? No, I honestly think that's absolutely right. Uh, we had one video that did over 7 million views on Facebook uh, and, and it's been spread all throughout the internet. And, People 
know about Standing Rock now, but they get confused as to where they heard it from because they did not hear it on CNN or any of the other corporate media. They only show up at the very end. Oh, they're like, oh, veterans are coming. And then they'll, you know, come in and, and, and buy up all the hotel rooms and pay exorbitant rates. With, with our ragtag crew of real reporters, investigative reporters, we cover that story from beginning to end, and now it's a national story. And I just feel like there's so much more we can do. Today a spill happened, uh, or we found out about a spill that happened in North Dakota of 176,000 gallons of oil. What happened? I thought they said they, it couldn't spill. So we'll send reporters there. And wherever, wherever there's news like that, if the corporate media isn't going to show up, no problem. Young Turks will show up. And, and we thank you for that. Uh, the, the violence, was it as bad as we, as, we, as we think it was when we saw some of that footage where the, the violence against these protesters was, first of all, unnecessary and way in excess of what had to happen? What was your take? Yeah, absolutely. And it's this arrogant attitude that you were talking about earlier, Pap, uh, where they think, well, I'm entitled to um, federal land where the Army Corps of Engineers actually has authority. I don't really care. They feel like they own the government. And uh, your burial land, your water, the Missouri River, where they uh, get water, not just for the reservation, but for so much of that area in North Dakota. And they feel like that's just mine to take. In, in Iowa, there's all these farmers that are fighting back, conservative rural farmers, because they do eminent domain. And they say, well, the government's going to back me up, so you're going to give me your property. In, in another pipeline and down in Texas, the judge had to increase the amount that uh, that particular pipeline was paying to the landowners by 30 times. Because they felt like, what's the difference? I'm just going to take your land and not even pay you for it in anywhere near fair market value. And so the violence that they did, they did against those protesters was part of that same entitlement. I, I'm entitled to have you not exercise your rights and get off of your land so that I could build this pipeline. And they did the tear gas canisters. Uh, they did uh, the, the water cannons in, in freezing temperatures. One woman uh, nearly lost her arm. On the Young Turks, we covered another woman who was blinded in one eye. This is way disproportionate to okay. what should have happened. Thank you. Thank you for being out there. I, I really, really appreciate it. All Americans should appreciate you being out there.